Sam ideally would have a fade stitcher and that surgical extraction can be all sorts of trouble if that comes up. Yeah, I think, I think that Jim's got to be about a three to one favorite here, but Sam's no stranger to this matchup and uh, knows what he needs to do in order to give himself the best chances. Sam's going to open up the action with a Gataxian probe. Sam's deck just flush with cantrips. Looks at a hand by Jim of two fetch lands, a Duress, a Cabal Therapy, a Ponder, an Ad Nauseum, and a Lotus Petal. A slow hand, but definitely a disruptive one. And this is a good hand against a blue deck. Uh, I mean, the it, it's very durable. It's very resilient. He's got Duress and Cabal Therapy to rip apart Sam's hand. He's got Ponder to, uh, to find what he might be missing. He's got the Ad Nauseum in order to actually be able to go off. The risk with this hand is that it's on the slow side, and Sam's battle is against time. So even a stable hand, like the one that Jim has, a durable hand, it may be problematic that it's so slow. Yeah, I think that it's really going to come down to how weak is Sam's hand to the discard. Because if the Duress and Cabal Therapy hit key cards, Sam's deck, it's very good at refilling, but it's possible for a couple of timely discard spells to, to cost Sam several turns. Now, in the long run, Sam ends up winning. The longer the game goes, the better it is for Sam because he has access to four treasure cruises and two dig through times, which are massive trumps over the discard spells like Duress and Cabal Therapy. Sam's deck on the surface looks like a Jeskai Ascendancy deck, but it's really a mental note thought scour deck that powers out blue delve cards. The problem, though, on the other hand, is that Sam only has so much live action in the matchup. He's yes. looking at Force of Wills, just guys tendency, and if the game goes on long enough, his copies of Pact of Negation. Barring that, the rest of the deck is just more cantrips. It's, yeah, it's just spinning deck, its tires. Sam's deck has more air than a high tide deck. <laughs> <laughs> so this is unusual. Sam will, will generally save his Lotus Petals for when he has a Just Guy Ascendancy to get the extra loots. But here, he wants to be able to sacrifice both and dig through time if, he, if it comes to that. He wants to have the option. I think another reason for Sam to deploy the Lotus Petals here is out of respect for Jim, possibly drawing Cataxium Probe, and then seeing that there's two Petals in the hand that are necessary and stripping them away. Yeah, I mean, even that Duress. The Duress would look at Sam's hand, see the, the Petals, and the Cabal Therapy could set that up. So then there's a question. Perhaps you're only supposed to be playing one of the Lotus Petals. Yes, I think he just wants to be able to dig through time in response to the duress. It's too brutal if the duress hits the dig because that's Sam's only action at the moment. Yep. So there is the duress from Jim off an underground sea. Now this will slow Sam down a ton because it takes both Lotus Petals, not takes him off the, the, the battlefield, and it means that Sam's hand, uh, even after he resolves the dig, is still going to lose his best card to duress. And it looks like Sam is going to take wow. a different route here and force Aggressive. Will to duress. Setting up for a cheaper dig through time, which allows him to keep his Lotus Petals. And now Jim trying to make sense of this. Yeah, Jim does not like that. There. That's 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 when you when your opponent has a card that is so good, they'll force Will your duress. That's where you start thinking, well, I've got this Lotus Petal and this Cabal Therapy. What could it be? Because I want to just hit that. And this is another tough thing. It, Jim's almost looking at this like, it can't be Jeskai Ascendancy because Sam would have probably just cast it last turn. He had the mana available. So what is going on in that hand? It sort of indicates that it's a Treasure Cruise or a Dig Through Time, but are you willing to use your Cabal Therapy and your Lotus Petal hoping to hit the card drawing spell? See, I think it's got to not be Treasure Cruise because Sam would have done it during his own turn. So we'll see. Does, does Jim have the Sniper read? Oh, Sam not even thinking about it. Does not dig in response yeah. and gets rewarded. Gutsy play from both players wow. and we're only a turn in. Wow. And, and he did name Treasure Cruise. Wow. And Sam, Sam did not blink. Yeah, didn't even hesitate. That was incredible mental discipline by Sam Black. Did not even pause to consider if he should respond. That was such a good play on Sam's part. And I think that's one of those things where Sam had his mind made up going into the turn. So, super smart. Exactly what was going to happen. So he didn't have to pause. There was no awkwardness, nothing to give away that it was dig through time. Yeah, and by him being so quick to just pass, it was like it was like having F6 on in Moto, where it's on Mitko, where it's like, 
yeah, I couldn't possibly respond. There's nothing, you know? <laughs> and now Jim's hand, which was already tight on mana, down a lotus petal. Sam simply plays a land and passes it back. Dark Ritual, the draw for Jim. God, that was such a good force of will, too. By denying Jim the information, he ensured that the Cabal Therapy missed. As a result, Jim down a Cabal Therapy and a Lotus Petal, both for free. And he doesn't even really know Sam's hand because he saw a dig through time, so he doesn't even know what the dig through time is going to end up taking. This is just masterfully played by Sam Black. Mysteries abound. Yes. The beauty of Legacy, in one turn, so many games and sub-games were on display. Absolutely. And now Jim does have a Dark Ritual in his hand, which is going to greatly, greatly speed up his game plan. If he, now, he doesn't have the Lotus Petal, or else he could just get busy right now. That was possibly the best draw on his deck this turn. But he does have a Ponder. And if he can Ponder into another Dark Ritual, I mean... Things might get crazy right now. It's tough to go off from a pretty low base. Jim's already made his land drop, so yep. killing through Andazia with no mana floating is, is challenging in the spot. I think Jim may want to just build up a better hand and try to go for it next turn because he knows that Sam isn't really working with anything right now. Well, Sam does have a dig through time. Sam could go off next turn. Remember, Sam is going to get two of his best cards in his top seven. He's got enough mana. If he just finds Jeskai Ascendancy and... Uh, like a Fate Stitcher or a Wind's Endicon, he could start getting crazy. Although, Jim now looking at two copies of Cabal Ritual. Interesting. Five cards in the graveyard. This preordain is going to be six. The Dark Ritual he's drawn this turn is seven. He could go for it if he wanted. That allows him ad nauseum with a mana floating. That's... That is impressive. I think he's going to do it, right? It, it's, uh, you know... The other way is he can kind of play this slow and have a boatload of mana next turn. But as you mentioned... He may not get it next turn. Yeah, now this is what this is where Sam is gonna have to be looking for force of will off dig through time. Because there's not a chance in the world Sam's gonna want to wet the uh, the ad nauseum resolve. Alright, looks like Jim's gonna go for it. There is Dark Ritual. That's the seventh card in the graveyard. Storm count of two. There is Cabal Ritual. Six mana in the pool. If there is such a thing as too much power, I have not discovered it. <laughs> yeah, because my... there is always a greater power. And here is Ad Nauseum, one black floating. Sam is going to respawn with Dig Through Time. Very, very important to find a Force of Will, and he does. He finds Force of Will plus Jeskai Ascendancy, a blue card already in hand. Wow. And Sam quickly takes the counter spell and his deck's namesake card. Well, he's, he is also debating this Treasure Cruise because the Treasure Cruise in his hand, yeah, and he's thinking better of it. The Treasure Cruise in his hand could potentially give him more resources to actually try to go off. It's tough because Ascendancy is what he actually wants. So the question is, can he go off with as little fuel as he has? And it looks like that's going to be his play. I like taking the Ascendancy here because Jim has nothing left. So even, got if Sam, time. even if Sam misses a draw step or two, he's going to be able to, to it's not going to kill him here. Yep, I like the play. Force of Will, countering Ad Nauseum, leaving Jim with nothing. Thought Scour the draw for Sam. And remember, Jim only has one Ad Nauseum in his deck. That means that he's now going to have to try to set up a Past in Flames situation, which means, realistically, Jim's going to need at least, like, five turns to reset up. Or he needs to own natural his tendrils, which is also going to be tough. Yeah, but, yeah, it's going to be hard to get enough storm count to, to finish the job that way. The deck's gotten a little bit better at those kind of kills because of Gataxian Probe. You, you do get these weird running draws, but uh, I agree with you. I think it's going to have to be Past in Flames here. So hard with so little land, so, you know, so few land and so few cards in hand. Jim here pondering, looking at Polluted Delta, Ponder, and Lotus Petal. This has been a master class from Sam Black. This has this been a, a very, very, game. very, very well played. And there's this perception in these combo mirrors where it's just, yep, we just throw our hands on the table, and who's ever faster or whoever has the force of will, they just get to win the game. And there's been so many nuanced lines of play from Sam in a very short game. Yeah, I mean, they don't, that's one of those skills you don't, they don't teach you just uh, at, you know, at Hogwarts. 
to just, as soon as they come all therapy, you snap off. Your illustrious cohort, Cedric Phillips, uh, had a, a Cabal Therapy situation with me a few years back. He just, Cabal Therapy is my next level blue deck, and without even a hesitation, all right. And uh, I obviously had Counterspell in hand, but he didn't take the Counterspell. Mm -hmm. I, the fact that I snapped it off so quickly, he was like, okay, Threads of Disloyalty, trying to get me. Cabal Therapy is one of the most, you know, games within games oh, yeah. uh, that Legacy has to offer. Yeah, it's too bad that the card's a little too powerful to reprint. Yep. Because that's a, that's a sweet one. Jim's going to pass it back. I remember Mike Turian used to play Cabal Therapy in his, uh, his white-green aggro decks in block. No way to cast him. <laughs> he just wanted to flash him back. Yep. He's just going to discard it to Patrol Hound or Wild Mongrel. So Sam's going to start making his move here. There is a mental note in the sense he triggers. Wow. Bait Stitcher in the graveyard, and Sam, I think, is ready to go. Yeah, he likes that. Now he just needs a treasure cruise or a dig through time to have all the resources he can need. And funny enough, his draw off the mental note, treasure cruise. Wow, you don't get any better than that. All right, Bait Stitcher's coming back. Wow, and the Lotus Petal means he's even got exactly enough, right? Yeah, because that's... Wow, exactly enough mana. Everything has come together for Samuel Black. Perfect. All right. This is going to be a couple of ascendancy triggers. Face Sisters on tap. Jim now just has to sit here and hope against all odds that Sam fizzles, but I don't think his deck's really going to do that. I mean, there's a brainstorm. Sam getting ahead. Every spell he casts nets two mana because of the Fate Stitchers. He doesn't even have to get up that high because uh, Jim is being at 18 means that if the Fate Stitchers get eight plus one plus one triggers, Sam can just attack for lethal. All right, here's a Brainstorm. A loot with Ascendancy. Sam gets rid of the land. Brainstorm resolves. Take their time. Lotus Petal yeah. wins Endicon. That's going to be, uh, excuse me, Treasure That's Cruise. That's already lethal because the Wind Zendikon uh, on, the, uh, on one of his dual lands can attack this turn. Lotus Petal and Treasure Cruise uh, already give Sam enough triggers that it's, it's academic at this point. Yeah. Jim's going to make him go through the motions here. Might get to see more of his deck, and perhaps Sam makes a mistake. So Sam now floating mana. Here's the Winds and the Con. More Sensi triggers. The Face Sisters on tap. Sam, I think looking to keep Pack Navigation just in case something weird happens. At this point, the Fate Stitchers and the Winds Endicon add up to 11 damage, and he's getting three pluses. Lotus Petal will be uh, three more. Ascendancy. So yeah, now the Ascendancy adds three more. The Lotus Petal would add six more, and that alone is enough to finish Jim off. And that's not even counting the Treasure Cruise. And Sam has Pact of Negation back up. There's the treasure cruise. Sam exiling, exiling his graveyard. More triggers to come. It's a lot to keep track of. It's important for Sam to take his time here because there's a million triggers going on right now. I think now we're ready to, s to resolve the loot, and now we are ready to resolve the treasure cruise. Another loot, and now three cards. Same with Force of Will and Treasure Cruise, uh, Force of Will and Pact of Negation. Even a blue card, Fate Stitcher. Although Sam has nothing to keep going with at this point. I guess he can cast a Fate Stitcher and then Pact Negation it. 
for another trigger. Yep. And this was some of the risk of keeping the patent negation as insurance over, say, the Wind's Endicon. Yep. Plus, he does risk dead ending if he draws nothing but counter spells and lands. And this is 16 already, right? 4, 8, 10, 13. Yes, I count 16. Although perhaps the count is different because there's that kind of dice all over the place. It looks like Jim is going to give it up and we move on to game two. Uh, the extra three was the Wind's Endicon as well. So Sam had, Sam had him covered by one. Moving on to the sideboard, what does Jim have to help out in this matchup? So he's got all kinds of things. Uh, we talked about Surgical Extraction as a weapon against Fade Stitcher. Carpet of Flower is a general utility card that's good against the islands at all. Xanted Swarm for locking out things like Force of Will. Abrupt Decay giving him ways to interact against uh, the combo itself like Jeskai Ascendancy. If he's willing to slow down, he's got access to tons of stuff. Even Dark Confidant, excellent in terms of uh, fighting through the counter spells that Sam Black is going to have access to. In Sam's sideboard, two Pithy Needles, an Echoing Truth, a Hydro Blast, a Port Bolt, three Source of Plot Shares, three Power Blasts, a Soul for Elemental, two Lightning Bolts, and a Flustered Storm. I like the Flustered Storm a lot. The three copies of Pyro Blast seem excellent. And then past that, it's, you know, do you want to bring in cards to try to fight Xanid Swarm? Do you predict that the gym has it? And if so, are you willing to bring in things like Fort Bolt or Source of Plow Shares that aren't really that efficient otherwise, but can answer those problematic creatures? Realistically, I think Sam would rather just rely on the Gut Shots that he has in his main deck. Gut Shot answers Anted Swarm or Dark Confidant, two cards he's very much expecting, but they can also sometimes help fuel his engine. He's not going to want very much of that stuff, but having access to some amount of that is, is totally reasonable. I think the most likely thing for Sam to want to cut is Pact of Negation. He's going to want to replace the Pact of Negations with Pyroblasts and make room for that one Fluster Storm. As we wait for these players to wrap up sideboarding, re Winter Regionals coming up. We have dates and locations announced. This program will be occurring alongside our state championships every Pro Tour weekend. So if you're not qualified for the big show, make sure to be checking out our regionals and state championships, starcygames.com slash regionals for more information, February 7th and 8th this year. And again, dates and locations already announced. For our first 200 players to show up at each event, you will receive this Menagerie of Squirrels. Hanging out on the play mat together. Squirrel Confidant, Squirrel Storm, all the rest. This is like, this is like enough squirrels that I think that turtle might actually have, uh, you know, th there might be a run for his money. Oh, particularly the Stoneforge Mystic plus Brainstorm combo. I mean, that's better than what most turtles bring to the table. Yeah. Yeah, most turtles at, at best bring like pizza. Yep. Or uh, nunchucks. Yeah. A bow staff, mm -hmm. if you will. A wise rat as like a sensei. Yes. Yeah. And that's that has nothing on Brainstorm and, and Dark Confidant and Stoneforge Mystic. N no. 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 No, uh, Stoneforge Mystic, like Dark Confidant, is all about greatness at any cost. Even if you have to search your deck for a batter skull and put it into your hand. Greatness at any cost, and then in parentheses, the cost is actually quite low. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's like the, the, uh, the flavor text that they didn't quite have room for in Yawgmoth's Bargain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I did sell my soul, but you should see what I got for it. Right. It was a hell of a deal. <laughs> I sold my soul, and it's a seller's market. Yes. Yes. But I think it's always a seller's market when it comes to soul, soul selling. Jim Davis, definitely disappointed to drop that game. However, it is generally a favorable matcher for him, and sideboarding is where he really gets his edge. Yeah, he gets a lot of very good anti-counterspell measures, and access to Abrupt Decay to interact is really nice as well. Yeah, I mean, Sam, Sam's deck, well, slower, very resilient to, to Force of Will. 
um, whereas Jim Davis's deck, a little more vulnerable. He did have duress and cabal therapy, but Sam Black danced circles around that. That just shows you the power of Gataxian Probe, too. The fact that Sam knew exactly what Jim was working with gave Sam time to plan out ahead of time what his response was going to be, how he was going to play that, so that he could protect information. Gataxian Probe is innocuous, but I think it's one of the most powerful come, cards to come down the uh, R&D pipeline in quite a long time. Yeah, it's, it's really weird that they would just print that, but uh, we don't talk about new Phyrexia. That's like, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not considered kosher to, uh, to critique new Phyrexia. Modern day Urza's Destiny? Yeah, I mean, like, what the hell? <laughs> Jim gonna open up with a contaxing probe of his own, looking at Brainstorm, Lotus Petal, Force of Will, Chess Guy Ascendancy, a second copy of Chess Guy Ascendancy, a second copy of Lotus Petal, and a Misty Rainforest. Is this just a turn one Ascendancy if he wants it? With Force of Will backup with his redundant Chess Guy Ascendancy? Yes. Yes, it is. Now, what he might want to do instead is slow things down a little, although he doesn't have a second land. So he actually might not want to slow things down. That actually seems like just get her done. Because often what you'll do in spots like that is wait until the second turn so that you can keep one Lotus Petal for after the Ascendancy, so that you can keep going and so that you can get an extra loot. However, against Jim's deck, which is so fast and has access to duresses and Cabal Therapies, Sam may just want to, you know... Just get into play while the getting's good. Absolutely, just hit the Turbo Booster Rockets, you know? Just spam the uh, Turbo button like it's NBA Jam. Jim trying to figure out what to do with this newfound information. Decides to again. take another look. Another land. So Jim's hand brainstorms and Gataxian probes. I'm oh, sorry, brainstorms and Lion's Eye Diamonds. Beyond that, it's just land, right? Yep, not a lot to do, but a lot of looks at things. We'll see how much time Sam gives him. Wins Endicon the draw. Wow, that's like the only thing Sam was missing. This is potentially a turn two kill for Sam. I mean, this is really, really strong. Now, it's not clear that he could actually go off because this is the, the slimmest of margins for a turn two kill, but he might, he's got chances depending on, you know, what the top cards of his library end up being after the shuffle. And I think with Force of Will back up through the whole thing, it yep. is attractive to just, you know, your, your ceiling is high and your floor is also pretty high. Yeah, plus honestly, style points. Yeah. I mean, he knows he's on camera. He knows the people, you know, he knows that the, the fan, everyone's going to swoon if Sam Black pulls off the turn two kill with Ascendancy here. Hundreds in the convention hall and thousands viewing yeah, Sam, worldwide. Yeah, Sam, heartthrob Black, picking up where Justin Bieber left off in terms of making the crowd go wild. Sam made a facial expression like he just heard you. <laughs> Sam knows. <laughs> As... Sam with the turn one just guy ascendancy off of two lotus petals. What I'm wondering is when is Sam going to bleach his hair like Justin Bieber? You know what I mean? I, I know that you might be thinking Sam Black with bleached hair that just wouldn't look right. But it but, doesn't look right on Bieber either. I don't think it really looks like right on anyone. Eminem in his younger years. Nah, still, still not happening. Jim here fetching, determining which land he wants. I imagine he will be brainstorming here at the end of the turn momentarily. Finds the tropical island, powering up potentially Carpet of Flowers and Xanted Swarm. You gotta respect a guy whose deck is all about insects and flowers, just the birds and the bees and the, the pollen. A tribal deck. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the brainstorm. Jim looking at a boatload of mana plus Infernal Tutor. This is a lot. This is, I mean, that was a huge Brainstorm. There's probably no deck in, in Legacy that uses Brainstorm as well as this Storm deck in terms of just setting things up, like pulling together combinations of cards that can just win the game out of nowhere. I think that, my, for me, the best Brainstorm deck is still Miracles, but Storm is a yeah. close second. Yeah, Miracles is pretty good. The fact that you get to take bad cards out of your hand and turn them into unbelievably broken, you know, like, one mana sweeper. It looks or, like draw five sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and two of the cards were Black Lotus. Right. <laughs> but this deck is, is not a shabby Brainstorm deck either. So Jim begins his turn. 
is he going to try to go off here? He knows that Sam Black is threatening to go off next turn. After all, the game has had a complete turn finish. Turn two might be the last one. Yeah. You can't take it with you. You know, those no. cards in your hand, they don't go to the next game. It looks like Jim has also picked up a duress for his trouble, so. Oh, yeah. AKA the backup plan. Jim's starting to do some math. I mean, he might be able to make a move here with duress along the way. If this dark ritual resolves, Jim's going to like his spot a lot because then he can duress. He'll have Lion's Eye Diamond in hand. He can Infernal Tutor, crack the diamond in response, and then just start going to town. Now, this will be the interesting play. Does Sam force of will the dark ritual? Because if he fails to do so, the force of will may not be good enough. Right. But if he does, Jim probably says go, and then Sam gets a shot to go off next turn. When I was your age, he couldn't force the will dark ritual. It was a mana source. It was like... I think that Jim may have the mana source dark rituals, in fact. Nice. The Tempest, I think Tempest was still a mana source era. Yep. Absolutely. From Mirage to Tempest. Back when Dark Ritual was just a staple, you printed in every big set of a block, you know, the fundamentals of magic. Dark Ritual counterspell in every single core set. Every single big set. Here's the Dark Ritual. Does Sam stop him here? It appears the answer is no. Jim with the duress. And Sam shrugs his shoulders and knows the die, the die is cast. Revealing Brainstorm, wins Endicon, and another Ascendancy. Yeah, the problem is, see, I don't know. And that's it, the kill. It's so hard to, yeah. You gotta force the will the Dark Ritual, I think. I know it's easy to stay from here, but. I think this, I think now we have a little role reversal where Jim's saying, I got you, and Sam's saying, show me you got me. Show me. Don't tell me, show me. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's like some scene from one of the Matrix movies. But I think that with these two Lion's Eye Diamonds, getting a pass in planes kill here is trivial if Jim can't just kill straight away by getting tendrils. Jim just being extra careful. He knows Sam's shields are down. What a doozy of a brainstorm last turn from Jim. I believe he got Dark Ritual, Infernal Tutor, and mm -hmm. Duress. Mm-hmm. All of these cards, big players in the turn he's currently having. Jim Davis's legacy deck reminds me of William Jensen's draft deck from last week at the uh, World Championships. Oh, he was storming a little bit? Oh, yeah. Now, Reed Duke also storming it up. It will not surprise you to know that those drafting those kind of decks is far outside my comfort zone. That is not where I excel as a Magic player. Yeah, I like drafting red-white aggro in that format. But uh, for that particular event, went with uh, blue-red control. Just try to win with two lightning rifts. Hard to say no to prophetic bolt. Two prophetic bolts. Yeah, I had the words of, of the, uh, the, the sage, Paul Rietzel, in my, in my head when uh, he says the way you get into blue-red control is you get past the fifth or sixth pick prophetic bolt, and that's the signal. You're cemented. Yep. And uh, when I got it, I was like, you know what? I can put down this wild mongrel. It's time to move. So Jim now, I believe, assessing that he is a mana short of a pass and flames kill and maybe brainstorming for a little bit of help. Ponder, Lotus Petal. Yeah, Lotus Petal's going to do it. That is the definition of the one extra mana he needs. Here is an Infernal Tutor, Jim already hellbent. Does he make a move with the Lion's Eye Diamonds? Yeah, I mean, don't, don't you just pick up uh, three red and three black? Or three red and three blue? Just get the show on the road? That's what it feels like to me. Yeah, probably three red, three blue. 
the lotus petal with dark ritual can start off the uh, the pass in flames in order to uh, get all the black you could ever want. Jim cracks some black lotuses in response. Now, does he, depending on what the storm count is at, he could potentially chain infernal tutors, but past in flames is probably just enough. So he's cast Dark Ritual, Duress, Brainstorm, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lion's Eye Diamond, Infernal Tutor. Another Lotus Petal. Yeah, so he can, I think he has multiple paths towards the kill at this point. Wow. Yeah, Nauseam one on the other hand, though, that's like a potential path to, albeit very unlikely, but a potential path to lose, right? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think he's a mana short of, of passive flames because the Lotus Petal is net even off of the Brainstorm. Mm. You can see why Sam is saying, all right, you got to show me because Jim now has to go through some acrobatics. At 14 with a boatload of mana should be good, but it's not 100%. Yeah, it's interesting. Which color of mana does he have in his pool? Jim looking for as much uh, mana as possible. He, he really wants things like Cabal Ritual, Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond, uh, anything that can give him mana. And then he's trying to find Infernal Tutor or Past in Flames in order to actually win, even a Tendrils. Yeah, he can, the Tendrils is going to be a straightaway kill if he finds the mana to cast it. Yeah. Any extra rituals. Black in the pool, Cabal Therapy, Infernal Tutor, Jim to 11. I don't think Jim can fail can fail to go off here because he might die on the way back. Sanded Swarm, 10, Lion's Eye Diamond, Volcanic Island, Lotus Petal, Bayou, Abrupt Decay, Cabal Ritual, Jim at 6. It's too bad these decks don't just have an Amrical in them. <laughs> Keep it interesting. A Draco. Just to mix it up a little bit, you know, like they rely on an Emrakul kill so that you can feel something every time you flip a card to ad nauseum. At this point, I feel like Jim can take the Petal, the Lion's Eye Diamond, Cabal Ritual, and Cast Infernal Tutor, sack the, Lion's Eye, sack the Lion's Eye Diamond, and we're done. So yeah. it looks like Jim's going to be stopping here. I imagine we're going to see the kill momentarily. Lotus Petal. There's Lion's Eye Diamond. Sacks the Petal, Cabal Ritual. Now here is Infernal Tutor. Lion's Eye Diamond cracked in response for Hellbent. And now we'll see if Jim still has the tendrils in his deck, I suppose. Yes, he does. And on to game three. Not a lot of turns for the amount of time we've played thus far. You know, the, everybody makes you show them the tendrils these days. Yeah. Nobody's ever going to get to do the whole sideboard out tendrils the thing. The Mike Long thing that's done? Well, yeah. I mean, I know there. Yeah. that story isn't necessarily it's, totally it, above it's, board. It's, but. The story is somewhat, uh, somewhat metaphorical, you know? Jim has brought in a lot of anti, a lot of anti counterspell stuff and the abrupt decays. And with a deck like Storm, sometimes it's tough to find the room. So after seeing that game, I would be surprised if the Carpet of Flowers and the Dark Confidants came in. I think he's probably just on Xantis Swarm. Surgical Extraction, Abrupt Decay would be my guess.
I don't know. Maybe he needs Massacre to go land destruction. I mean, Sam's got Tundra. And if you oh. Massacre the Wind's Endicon to slow him down, I mean, obviously he gets the Tundra back, but I mean, that's mana efficiency. Yes. That's going real deep. Yeah. Maybe he's just better served with the Abrupt Decays on the, on the Zendikon. That might be the easier way to do it. And you know, if, if Massacre has other utility. Like if your Dark Confidant, if you did board in the Dark Confidant and things start getting out of hand, yep. if, uh, if you need, you know, an exit strategy, Massacring your own Dark Confidant, that constitutes an exit strategy, an exit from something, probably yep. the tournament. Look, you can never be too safe. What I'd like to see is, you know, both players shuffle their, their legacy and standard decks together and just run it. I think in that meta game, you probably want to be double ascendancy. No, 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 but you didn't know. That's part of the, you, oh. didn't, yeah, you didn't know going in. It's just as is. So Jim Davis, half blue white control, half storm versus Sam Black playing half just guy ascendancy combo, half uh, red white tokens. I feel like my invitational performances would have been a lot better if these were the rules. Yeah? It would have been a very natural integration most of the time. Yeah. All right, cool. Eight lightning bolts. Great. Easy. God, it's so brutal. I've got windswept heath. <laughs> no, no, no duels to get. Game three underway. The winner of this match. Probably just a win away from the top eight. Can start looking at some draws very soon. At least they had a, at least they had a flooded strand. Go find planes. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Jim already with a slot in the Players' Championship. Sam would need an invitational win to sneak into Roanoke next weekend. Yeah, this is just his PTQ, though. This is it. I think he just wanted a chance to play some of his new brews. He loves playing his brews. And uh, the Red White Tokens deck, Jeskai Ascendancy combo deck, two decks that uh, Sam definitely has been working on for quite some time and enjoying experiencing some success with his brews again. I think he just misses devotion to blue. He misses the good old days when he I used believe to. it. Yeah. Sam keeps seven. Looks like Force of Will, land, Lotus Petal in hand. Jim Davis decides he's going to have to throw it back. What's he looking for here besides uh, you know, like some dream hand of just dark rituals and ad nauseum. I think the abrupt decays are nice, but I think he'd rather just have duresses. Just a nice combination of like duress, cabal therapy, and abrupt decay, maybe like just play defensive for a little bit. I don't think he can really play defensive because Sam's deck is just so much more consistent, so much more power if the game goes longer because of the card drawing spells. So I think he needs to keep Sam a little bit off balance, but also threaten a, ki a quick kill himself. Meanwhile, Sam Black just wants a force of will, which he has. He just wants to not die on the first two turns. But we saw in the game that Jim won, even a force of will in hand is no guarantee of anything. No. Nope. Between duress and cabal therapy and now Xanthid Swarm, Jim has a lot of ways to interact, or a lot of ways to disrupt, I should say. This is a tough one. It looks like he's got plenty of great cards, but his mana a little short. Relying on Lotus Petal, uh, Lotus Petal to try to cast Ponder, that is an unreliable way to uh, to try to fix your mana. Jim going to five, and uh, you know these mulligans are so brutal for Jim. Mulligan to five is never good, but I feel like a deck like Sam's can survive it because there's enough redundancy in the big card drawers. But because Jim is a critical mass deck. It's way, way worse for him to be taking these mulligans. I mean, Sam could mulligan to three and still treasure cruise on the second turn. Yeah. Yeah, fetch land and the mental note is four cards. Yep. Do that again, and you're good. Turn one, 
fetch mental note, four cards. Turn two, fetch mental note, treasure cruise. Boom. And that's not even counting Gataxian probes. Yeah, there's some Gataxian probe Lotus Pell draws we could do on turn one conceivably. Not that he would, but if that was his goal. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's nothing quite like the efficiency of turn one, fetch land, uh, I guess four Gataxian probes, and then uh, two Lotus Petals. You don't even need two, I guess you one yeah. Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal is such a funny way to power Treasure Cruise. Looks like Jim's gonna keep his five. Sam opening up the action. The Misty Rainforest finds Volcanic Island. We have not seen a lot of graveyard hate in this tournament thus far. Feels like the format could be, you know, ripe for somebody to show up with main deck rest in peace. I was going to say it would be ripe for someone to show up with dredge. Mmm, that's a good point. A mental note from Sam. Mills over a Thought Scour and a Chrome Mox. Draws Eight. Ascendancy for the turn. What do you think about the main phase mental note there? Kind of interesting, right? I would imagine trying to... Uh, curious, maybe Gataxian probe is trying to keep the ball rolling? Interesting. Ponder the play from Jim. Looks at Abrupt Decay and two lands. That Abrupt Decay is not castable. Not anytime soon. I don't know if the lands are much help besides the Underground Sea. Good chance, Jim. I'll shuffle this back. The thing is, he kind of needs a little bit of land. He does need the Underground Sea. And he does have another Ponder in hand, so he could potentially get the Underground Sea suck it up that he's going to have to take the Abrupt Decay, and then shuffle again. And he does do it. He does need the Underground Sea that bad. Passes back to Sam. Sam, as usual, all kinds of air. It's going to open up here with a Flooded Strand. With just 13 minutes left in the round, you would think that this match has involved more than seven turns, but it has not. Now we saw a... What was it? Turn turn two from kill from Jim, game two. Yep. On game, the play. On the play. Sam had a turn three kill, game one, I believe. So yeah, we're on turn seven. A lot of shuffling, and these games are complicated. And actually, both players have only had six turns. Lotus pedal. Here's the ascendancy. Sam setting up to win next turn. And he has Force of Will in his hand. What he needs is a Wind Zendikon or a Fate Stitcher. It looks like he has the Wind Zendikon. He is positioning himself to have chances to win next turn. I don't know if he has enough cantrips here. The Catassian Probe reveals Ponder, Underground Sea, Polluted Delta, Infernal Tutor, and Dark Ritual. Not a bad five card hand. Sam draws mental note. That's huge. Because remember, next turn, the Wind Zendikon uh, gets it going. If, the, if he can find a Treasure Cruise or a Dig Through Time, he wins. But he is kind of short on cantrips at the moment. What he really could use is a Brainstorm or a Treasure Cruise. I like Sam's chances here. Ponder from Jim. And keep in mind, even if Sam doesn't win next turn, it's not like Jim has it for sure. I mean, Sam has two Force of Wills in hand. Jim looking at Cabal Ritual, another Abrupt Decay. And now here's the question, if you're Jim. Do you go fishing for Lotus Petal? Because if Sam lets the Lotus Petal resolve, you can Abrupt Decay the Ascendancy, and Sam does not know there's an Abrupt Decay in Jim's hand yep. right now. Yeah, and actually he saw Jim's hand last turn, so the Abrupt Decay would have literally had to be the top card. And it was, but Sam doesn't know that. I think a Lotus Petal would be a great play here, because I think for sure you would do it if you were Jim. But it does not look like he has such nice things. We'll find out on the mystery draw here momentarily. 
who draws Dark Ritual. This may set up Jim for a kill next turn if he gets there, but that is a big if. And the problem, of course, being Jim's hand, well, potentially explosive, extremely vulnerable to force a will. Jim passes back. Volcanic Island, the draw. Same thinking better of the Tundra, wanting the Volcanic Island instead, because of things like Pyroblast. Here's the Wind's Endicon. Brainstorm is huge. That is exactly what Sam was looking for. And away we go. Brainstorm. That, I mean, that's the best thing short of a treasure cruise. Sam loots with the Ascendancy, discards Force of Will, Brainstorm resolves. Fate Stitcher, Force of Will, Gataxi improve. Yeah, I mean, Fate Stitcher means that Sam is effectively going to start getting ahead on mana. He doesn't have to draw his whole deck. He just has to get that Wind's Endicon to Volcanic Island and the Fate Stitcher up to enough to do 20 to Jim. And remember, it's not, it's not nothing if Sam can do like 16 or something. Because taking Ad Nauseam away from Jim Davis is going to make it harder for him to go off. Here's a mental note. Fate Stitcher now in the graveyard. Mental note resolves. Looks like another mental note. Gets Fate the face Stitcher back. is unearthed, untaps the Zendikon. Now the spell starts ne start netting mana. It looks like we're going to see another Thought Scour. No, Gitaxi and Probe first. Sam wants to get a little bit ahead. He wants information. He just wants to make sure he knows what he's up against here. No surprises. There is an Ascendancy trigger. Another loot, forcible gone. Gitaxi and Probe shows. Sam is up to seven damage. A hand with nothing going on, and Jim, Sam shows that he's just going to keep it going. Uh, the th three Thought Scours only put him up to 13. I mean, he still has a ways to go. He's got all the mana he could want, but he has certainly not won yet. He's had to miss a lot of loots here. Sentency trigger. Yeah, I mean, his top 12 cards, basically, but... Draws Kataxi and Probe. Two more mana. Sam with lots of Thought Scours. At this point, uh, I think he can get up to 15 just with what he's showing, but he still needs to find a few more. He needs three more cantrips. Here are the Ascendancy Triggers. Another draw and discard. Shows a hand of just mana. Nothing yep. to be done. Nothing that he can do to interact, so Sam knows the coast is clear. Think through time the draw. Yeah, that basically locks it up. Yep. I mean, this ascendancy deck doesn't fizzle a whole lot anyway. This is. It has some shades of Turbo Land. Like, yes, there is a very, so he, very small chance. He does need to exile cards. So, our table spotter there reminding Sam of that fact. Now the Dig Through Time resolves. Basically, any two cantrips here win it. Any two spells he can cast. Lotus Petal, another Ascendancy. Wow. Sam Black with Just Guy Ascendancy. Looks like he's advancing to 11 and 2. There would have to be some sort of catastrophic operations error for him to fizzle from here. He is in 100% territory. Another Ascendancy.
the die on the ascendancy tracking how many pumps are across the team the die on the wind zendikon indicating how many extra triggers are on that because it came into play before the face stitcher the die on the bottom there indicating the amount of mana that sam has a third ascendancy so sam is up to 17 damage 12 13 17 yep if he has one more spell that's exactly 20. This guy's in the pool. Such a good time. <laughs> How to turn your opponent into a witness. I'm definitely witnessing a mugging right now. The dice continuing to count all of the things. But hey, if Jim's not going to concede, there's no reason for Sam not to be extra cautious. So each of those die on the ascendancy, multiply those by two. That's how much power is being added there. So looks like 20 just on ascendancy triggers alone on top of the power that the rest of the deck, had, uh, the other creatures have. Another thought scour. For Sam extra rubbins. Sending a message to Jim Davis. Each of these ascendancy triggers resolve one at a time. Another fate stitcher from Sam. And here comes the beatdowns. Sam Black, two games to one over Jim Davis. Jeskai Ascendancy, Combo Deck and Legacy gets Sam very, very close to the top eight with three rounds to go. Yeah, I mean, 11 and, 11 and two is, is pretty close. I think a record of 12 and four when you have breaks as good as Sam's is gonna be good enough. So Sam looking to win w at least one more match. If he wins one match, he can draw his way in for sure. Very impressive stuff. I, I don't even know if we've seen the best build of Just Guy Ascendancy in Legacy yet because there's so many different cards you can potentially play. Sam, not even bothering with Ponder, for example. Not efficient enough. Yeah, I mean, he only had room for 20 cantrips in his deck. And uh, he instead went with uh, Brainstorm, Gataxian Probe, Thought Scour, Mental Note, and uh, Ancestral Recall. You mean, sorry, Treasure Cruise. Treasure, 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 treasure Cruise. And what's the Dig Through Time analog? There's that five-minute card from Mirage, right? Yeah, Ancestral Memories. Ancestral Memories. The Andrew Cunio special. Yep. 